I'm about to tell a story of something that's been forgotten or neglected or never even really being paid attention. I searched the entire YouTube, even do it now, go and type El Negro and then write El Negro Botswana, El Negro South Africa, El Negro France or anything. The story of El Negro is a story that history is pretending to forget. It's about something that happened in the history that nobody is talking about. But guess what? Kishma Wal, I'm here for it. It's a story of, it's a sad story that uh, we need to talk about. And uh, I have to bring up the issue of El Negro and all the injustices that happened up to this day. Kishma Wal, let's do this. Alright guys, top of the morning, top of the morning Kishma world. Today we are going to delve into a very disturbing story from Botswana or is it from France or is it from Spain? But it's a very disturbing story that has happened in history and uh, an opportunity that I got to go and visit one of these places or this only place in uh, Haberone in Botswana which was very kind of sad, kind of emotional. Today we will dive into the, disturb the, the disturbing tale from history, the story of El Negro, El Negro as they call it. El Negro basically means the black or the black man basically or the nigger. And this is uh, a Tswana man. And remember I said Tswana because the Tswana's in South Africa, the Tswana's in Namibia, the Tswana's in Botswana, you know. So it's the story of a Tswana man whose body was stolen from Africa to be displayed in Europe, specifically in France and in Spain for over 100 years. This is one of those stories that you don't even really fathom how people could think like this. Of course, it had to start with the Europeans and uh, that's why our story today will definitely start from uh, France, <laughs> the Frenchmen. You know, it's one thing to keep uh, a, a body of a human being mummified like the Egyptians did or like the monks for a long time because they themselves it's part of their culture it was part of their cultures to honor their kings and their leaders and they should they would used to mummify bodies and just keep them in these places where we can go and see them now in museums up to this day you know and it's another thing to stuff the dead body of an African warrior and display it like a trophy I don't know if you know what I mean, along with other wild animals. Man, this is as recent as, what is it, 18 years ago, 19 years ago now? About 18 years ago, this was happening still. I'm gonna tell you how this all started. This, it started with two French uh, crazy men, I can call them. You know, the French have always been crazy in history. So they were explorers, they were researchers, they were scientists, so to speak, who used to go and tour the world and just you know look for exotic animals and exotic creatures so that they can you know uh, dry them or mummify them not even mummify them they just dry them up then they take them back to france to paris to be more specific and uh, display them for the elite europeans to go and see but now these two crazy madmen uh, if i can remember their names i'll remember i'll tell you uh, i'm gonna put it down here below they decided, you know, they were in Southern Africa, not known exactly where in Southern Africa, probably Botswana, probably South Africa or Namibia. And uh, one man who is unknown up to this day, he's just known as El Negro because that's what they, they classified him. He died because of reasons unknown, probably natural causes. A recent autopsy showed that maybe he had pneumonia, but death is natural. So the guy died, the African guy, he died. Then these two Frenchmen, came the night of the burial they came and removed his body stole his body and ran away with it why because they had to take it back amongst other animals to show it as a creature you know to be displayed in the museums in france so they just put a wire as a spine and then they used like some cardboards and uh, newspapers to seal the casket and then they took his body shipped it to france imagine then when they go to France, 
they skinned the body, removed all the organs, you know, took them away. His bones and everything were used as a display of what the black man is. The skin itself, they, you know, they made, they stuffed stuff in it so that it looks like the figure of a black man and they painted it with shoe polish to make it appear even darker so that when people would come and see and watch him from the, you know, when they come to see the, the, the things happening in France, they would come and just enjoy this beautiful thing. They called him the African Bushman. They never gave him a name, an identity. They just took a black man and decided to go and bury him. This thing went on for a while, everything that happened, but it was basically in the early 19th century. Yes, because it was so fashionable by then for Europeans to collect wild animals from around the world. But guess what, they classified us also as the animals, so people would see how it is. You know, so the fame of this guy came, you know, uh, in the 1970s, uh, like, uh, not came, but continued lasting for about 170 years. So this guy, he never rested in peace because he was taken from Africa and his body was being used as a display for 170 years in Paris, France. And people would come and take photos with him. They would create even postcards and like, oh, I wish I'm sending you greetings from Paris in France, from the El Negro, you know, stuff like that. And he was displayed for like that for a very, very long time, almost 170 years. Until this guy got a particular interest in it, as French guy, uh, a Spanish guy, I'm sorry. And uh, decided to buy the, the guy and took him to uh, Spain in Barcelona. And in Barcelona, you know, there's like the Catalonia region there. So he again took the El Negro, his body, his skin. They, there's a word they had for a taxi, taxi, taxi where you like remove all the organs and make him dry so that he's, you know, he's continued to be on display. So people would come and just view him in a museum. But then uh, there was one Spanish guy of Haitian origin, power to the people of Haiti, you know who was like, you know what, this does not sit right to me. It doesn't sit right with me. Why would a black man be put on display for white men to come and see? You know, he was a Spaniard. Then he was like, you know, he brought an uproar and he started making noise. And he was like, no, this should not be. It's indignifying for black people. It's racist. It doesn't build on any culture. But of course, the Spaniards, the white people, they were against that. Wait, I just need to tilt to the sun because I'm trying to catch my sunset, you know? So the Spaniards, they, would, they were not having any of that. And the people of Catalonia in Barcelona in Spain, they were claiming El Negro, as they called him, as part of their thing, that he deserves to be there, he deserves to remain in the museum. But the guy was like, no, this is impossible. But the pressure uh, was not enough, but at least he made a voice known. And uh, finally, it got worldwide attention and spread to the Americas where uh, Magic Johnson, if you guys know Magic Johnson, very, very popular guy, he was like, you know what, I also agree, this is not going to happen. There was also a very popular basketballer who was called, uh, uh, what was his name? It was Magic Johnson, yeah, but the other guy was also another Johnson. I'll remember the name because I'm a bit rough in my history right now. He was also like, you know what, it's not going to happen. And the pressure amassed until the African Union the chairman at that point also called Kofi Annan. He also exerted more pressure and was like, you know what? This will not happen. You cannot steal a man from Africa, take him away from his homeland, display him in museums for over 180 years. And then it was just too much and the pressure had to be released. And guess what, guys? This was not long time ago. Remember, he was stolen from Africa in the 1800s, but as late as 1997, El Negro was still in museums in Spain. You know, it was crazy. So the pressure was too much. The Spaniards were fighting against this. They were like, we have to keep him here. He was he was made very much shorter than we average are, painted in black, makes you as an African be depicted in the most negative ways ever possible. So the pressure was too much until the museum decided, you know what, we're gonna take him down. And they put him in a, in a closed cell somewhere, you know. But, uh, the museum was still open and he was still there, but it's not until Barcelona was chosen to host the Olympics in 1990 
that they decided, you know what, this is going to be an embarrassment for us. The whole world's eyes is on us. There will be black athletes who will be competing in the Olympics. So that is when they decided, you know what, let's take this guy back to Africa, where he belongs. And uh, the Botswana government was very graceful enough to take him back home and give him a befitting burial. So El Negro was actually given a place to lay and rest and uh, just be buried in his own, own home country. The only problem is it is not known whether he died in modern day Botswana, modern day South Africa or modern day Namibia, you know. But Africa is Africa and he's home and he's happy. And he was actually given a very nice and proper burial. There's a museum there, you can go and you read about that. I was there, I enjoyed my time there, I enjoyed, uh, you know, just listening to or reading about the history, you pay 20 pula to get in just to make sure that the park is being conserved and, may, and, and it's just okay. Because before, when the burial happened, you know, it was not really done well because it was just an open, open place. So it was not really well maintained. Kids sometimes would come and just play football there. But now they decided, you know what, we need to preserve this guy as our hero. Because it's not the first time that this has happened for Africans. We also know the story of the South African lady who was taken in real life to be displayed in England and in France again as a real life, you know, projection of what the black South African woman was supposed to look like, especially because of her physical features. So as black people, we really have been through a lot. And I felt like it's good for me also to tell the story of El Negro, the, uh, our hero, our African hero who went, you know, he was stolen, man, and he, he was stolen in the middle of the night he didn't get a befitting send off. He didn't even get to rest after suffering in this world, taken again to France, being displayed there for 170 years, being taken to Spain, all these things, all this humiliation, until now he is in this place, which I'm going to show you. I went in briefly, I paid my respects to him, and I hope you guys have learned something from the story of El Negro. I wish we could give him a different name, but uh, so far we'll call him that because it just means the black or the black man. So that has been the small history of El Negro. And uh, maybe let's see a little bit more of the great deeds that the leaders and the government and the people of Botswana did. I don't have too much content from Botswana because I lost a lot of my footage. So bear with me, this is what I could salvage and what I could save. But for now, thank you so much Botswana. Beautiful flag, beautiful country, beautiful people. I love it so much. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video. Kish my world, top of the morning. Okay guys, so another thing that's very nice to see and do here in uh, Botswana is to come and visit this amazing uh, monument here, or should I say like a gravestone of uh, El Negro, El Negro. And uh, El Negro, let's find out who it is. I hope there's some information about it over here. But uh, she's there, right? Yeah, she's there. Buried, please, okay. Yeah, so... Yes, uh, this is what? Okay, uh, El Negro is an African of Tswana origin who died in 1830 and was displayed in Spain for 170 years. His body was taken from Africa to France in 1830 by two brothers, Jules and Eduardo Varux, who stole the body from its grave. And on the night after he was buried, the body was displayed in a Paris shop of the Varux brothers and was sold to a certain Francis. Uh, Darder, who later bequeathed the remains to the town of Banyoles, north of Barcelona in Spain. It was in 1992 that Arceline, a Spanish national of Haitian origin, drew the attention of Africa and the world to the display of El Negro in a Banyoles museum in Spain. And five years later, the Organization of African Unity called for the repatriation of the body to Africa. On behalf of the African continent, Botswana agreed to repatriate and bury the remains. The body of El Negro arrived in Botswana on 4th October 2000 and was buried the following morning in Sholofelo Park, which is where we are right now. In 2006, El Negro's grave was declared a national monument. Yeah, man. So that is it. So this is, uh, if you guys have seen this thing somewhere, or maybe you've seen uh, in pictures, in archives of this black person who was being displayed in like in museums in Europe, you know, so people to come and see what a black person looks like. It was really unfortunate. So later after he died, of course they called it El Negro. El Negro means the black or the nigger, you know. So they had to, after all those trauma, at least finally 
El Negro was late to rest here. I don't know what his original name was, but uh, that's unfortunately how it is known right now. So this is the remains. This is the park, as you can see. It's like well protected with the Botswanan flags. These ones are the Botswanan colors. And right here in the middle is where El Negro lays. So rest in peace. He went through a dark, dark time, a dark life. Yeah. And uh, thanks to the Botswana people and the Botswana government for accepting to take the remains of uh, this, you know, awesome monument and represent the entire African continent, man. Big up yourself. Salute. That is it.